Yeah, my name's Yuri Wiedenhofer and I'm an old Canberra boy. It's the most plastic material. It's incredibly plastic. Yeah, this is amazing stuff because it's just full of organisms, bugs, because it's literally been living underwater and it's just full of goop, like full of carbon, you know, grey. Mm -hmm. No oxygen in there, so it's rotted, anaerobic, incredible. And that's the secret, because it's the same stuff geologically as this, but you, you just add water to this stuff and try and turn into that, good luck. The secret is it's been rotting underwater for 25 years. So where did you find it? In my dam. It took me 15 years to find it. The big dam. Yeah. Down there, I mean, you wouldn't think. It just yeah. looks like mud. But yeah, it's incredible stuff. Well, I guess some of my earliest teachers, actually, they were in the Canberra Potter Society because I was a, a um, youngster joined the Canberra Potter Society, I guess, in 1975 or something like that. And um, so, yeah, a few people took me under their wing then and introduced me to clay, pottery, firing. Uh, well, I, was, I knew I wanted to go and everybody back then, well, they were all going to head off into the bush somewhere and build a kiln and make pots. Most people wanted to go up north and um, I thought I'd stay down this way and I was looking around Maria, but prices were pretty exy and nearly bought 100 acres on top of Mount Polwombra. But then I saw an ad in the paper and there was this place down here and um, Paradise Found, I think, I think it said, and Jonathan Pittendry, uh place they had and, and we'd camped down here as students and I knew the area and I thought oh well, that, that looks all right I came down and Jonathan took me through the rainforest galley and the, saw the dam and it had the sea views and I could watch boats go by ships and it was half price to what I was looking at up the coast I thought, this is all right yeah we we're going to fire it this year actually or last year we're aiming to so getting all this wood together but uh, it just got drier and drier and it wasn't going to happen um, but it's going to happen unless i think about it it'll probably happen next year but it's going to happen soon yeah the first kiln i did a workshop i think at strathman in 95 there was a canberra Triennale ceramic conference there and Fred Olson did a kiln building workshop and Alan Watt got me onto the helping squad. Just laid using a Middle Eastern technique really or a Thai technique, laid back style where you just need to prop up a few bricks in the middle, the key bricks, yep. and you get a really good um, you get a really good look. Fire is interesting, yeah, because it's wood firing, so you don't want to buy gas. You don't have push button electricity. That's all too easy. But the really interesting thing is to understand wood. What sort of wood have you got around you? You start to understand the woods you have, the fuels, how they burn. Again, what sort of components make up their ash? How are they rich in certain fluxes or what sort of colours do they offer up? All the rest of it. Um, so yeah, so you fire, your kiln is the ultimate arbiter of a kind of truth. Well, I've just had my first solo show down in Melbourne last year and um, I've always avoided all that. And, and I guess when you have a solo show, you've got to get your act together and stop throwing a spanner in the works all the time and trying to self-sabotage all the time because it's a bit scary down that path 
So I pulled my finger out and I thought I'd better pull it off, get it together. Anyway, so I used some of these materials I've been playing with and not understanding for many, many years. And I thought, well, I think this will work. Anyway, so I used a clay I found in more recent years and with this soda feldspar, which used to be a commercial mine up in the mountains there, and I managed to do something that was pretty interesting. Isn't that incredible? That's, I was thinking I should turn that into a big moonstone. You know moonstone is feldspar? Mm -hmm. And all it needs is a real gentle cooking. So it just bubbles up into a big, nice round moonstone ready for a, a giant's finger or something. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe it was September already, but certainly October. The whole place was drier than I'd ever seen it. I'd seen it dry probably twice before in the last 30 years where it was like autumn. Every, you know, so many leaves had dropped to the ground and thick leaves, thick bed of autumn leaves, if you like, on the ground. All the leaves that were still remaining on the bushes were crispy. Well, I did. I lived in this kiln for a couple of weeks, really. I didn't actually spend a night in here, but I prepped it out to move into. Um, and the fire's wrong. This is, I had this bricked up to here and I could just squeeze in the side here. I had bricks and mud on the inside. I could climb in and seal myself in. All sealed up, all capped and sealed up, airtight. That was my um, fire bunker. And all my, a lot of goods in there, pots and stuff down one side of the wall. Like it took me a long time to move in and a long time to move out. <laughs> and that was all full of stuff. That kiln was full of stuff. It kept me busy and kept my mind off the approaching um, disaster, really. Yeah. So yeah, I used to air it out on the good days and yeah, kept the smoke out of it. Anyway, that's my story.